Good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? So today we celebrate the legacy of Dr. King. Now, in order to truly celebrate the legacy of Dr. King, then the only thing that I can speak on today is economic empowerment. And why would that be? I can speak on economic empowerment because when I look at what I perceive to be through my studies of Dr. King's and his agenda is that he recognized that we already had economic empowerment in our communities because of segregation. Our dollars circulated within our community. The doctors and lawyers, the shopkeepers were all within that community. Now, what Dr. King was, trying, was, was going after was let's get an equal footing at the table, being able to vote, to have more self-determination of our politics and our infrastructure that goes on within and around our community. So he went to that fight first. Now, if Dr. King had not been assassinated and had been, and since we were granted the rights of vote, the, the voting rights, then having the right to vote, having the right to go and do as we please, and being able to control our economics would have made the African American community at that time and even now the most powerful group within this country. He knew that, and so did they, and he was assassinated for it. Now, he had, Dr. King had a dream. His dream has now turned into a nightmare. Why is his dream a nightmare? His dream is a nightmare because now, although we have equal footing to come to the table and vote, because we ask and beg for that, what we lost is our self-determination. We lost our ability to decide because we lost our ability to control our resources. It turned into a nightmare. They burned Tulsa and they burned other areas where the black community was supportive of the black community. Why? Because you had to be fearful of ever creating a financial power structure. They massacred and they murdered people to make sure that you don't. And they also assassinated Dr. King and Malcolm in order to make sure there was no leadership that would stand up for you. The leadership that came afterwards, the entertainers, the other ones, the other ministers who went for the high profile stuff, that's not real leadership. That's not real leadership. They stayed away from political, from the economic environment. Why? Because that's where the power lies. Now we can turn his nightmare into a reality, a glorious reality. We can turn his nightmare into one by doing three simple things that takes three people. The first person is going to take the clergy. Yes, the clergy has to come back and stand strong. The clergy has to be able to take two minutes out of every sermon and talk about economic empowerment within the community and circulating your dollar within the community and being part of the infrastructure and the growth of the community and supporting the school systems and supporting the politicians who only support your community. The ministers have to be able to stand there and the clergy have to be able to stand up for the people in that vein and it has to be the clergy because the clergy has the most influence in the community. So clergy members, if you're brave enough, if you're strong enough, if you're courageous enough, if you actually care about your people and if you actually want to stand there and teach about abundance, if you want to stand there and teach about the kingdom of heaven laid out upon the earth, then you have to have the courage to stand there and talk about economic empowerment because you can't do one without the other. There is no kingdom on earth without economic empowerment. There's just not because your people will always be destitute and always be begging if you don't teach them how to have abundance. The second person the businessman and woman. The business person in the black community, you've got to run a real business. Stop running a hobby or running some ghetto-fied business out of your backyard or your basement or whatever or how you're doing it. And even if you have a shop, then run it like a real business. Keep your shop clean. But let's go into the more um, technical details of it. Have a great product. Ensure that your product is great and ensure that your product is consistent. All right, and the way that you ensure that your product is consistent is that you have a process that is easy to follow for your employees and yourself to be able to follow it each time and so that it is consistent each time. And then the third one is have great people. You gotta train your employees to have great customer service so that your customers have a great experience from the customer service they receive when they come in the door and they are able to have great product because your employees consistently provide a great product because they're following the process. And the third person is the consumer. Consumers, stop thinking that every black business is a ghetto business. Stop thinking that you can't inconvenience yourself to go support a black business. 
It is sad today that you will drive across town to go to a business that has nothing to do with you, don't care about you, and don't provide anything within your community, but you won't go down the street 1.8 miles, and yes, I take that as a personal one for my customers who won't come 1.8 miles down the street to support a business that they claim that they love so much. Don't claim it if you're not willing to do it. And if you're not willing to do it, then don't complain about the teenage black man unemployment being 55%. Don't complain about there not being great school system. Don't complain about there not being a great infrastructure within your community if you are not willing to inconvenience yourself for the short time frame that it would take for you to go over there and purchase and support that business. And one last thing for the business is you best support that community as well. But don't complain if you're not willing to go out of your way. Look, people, we can do this. We can be the most powerful group of people within this country by simply controlling our environment, our economic environment. If you dam up the currency, and just like the Hoover Dam, and as the water builds out, the land becomes green. The land flourishes. It flourishes far wider than it would if the current just kept moving out. When the current just flows out, only what is near the banks flourishes. So if you want your community to flourish, if you want that, if you desire that, if you want to truly honor Dr. King, then get involved in economic empowerment within your community. Ministers, you have to lead the way. Business owners, you have to provide a great consistent product. And then consumers, inconvenience yourself for the short time frame. Because once a business recognizes where its customers are driving from, they'll put another one in that community. All right? So y'all have a great day. My greatness is non-negotiable, and so is yours. And to Dr. King, we honor your legacy.